hello hello and happy Saturday night it is time for a Saturday sip and draw um, welcome if you are new if you haven't been here before we had a couple new people join through the week a couple people who have said in post that this is their first one people asking what supplies to use, so I assume that there's gonna be a couple newbies here today. Uh, let me just get my stuff all posted. Welcome, hope you guys are having a good weekend. Um, there we go, we should be good. So hopefully people find it. Welcome to Sip and Draw. Um, I'm Stacy. for those that don't know me who haven't been here. Um, I even put my fancy party clothes on for you. No, actually, you know, yesterday I started kind of like dressing nicer, dressing as if I was going somewhere. Um, I've spent like this whole quarantine in like cut off shorts, ripped jeans, lots of t-shirts. I put on a dress yesterday and I felt really good in that dress. So I decided, you know what? I'm gonna dress up like I got somewhere to be even if I'm just staying here. So that's what I've done yesterday and today. Um, even though I am also just staying at home. I haven't gone anywhere. Target run yesterday, you know, the, the typical stuff. Um, so let's see, what little announcements do I have for tonight? We are drawing flowers, it's a floral theme. If you went onto Instagram, you saw a sneak peek of it, um, of what the drawing is, so know that. If you follow me on Instagram, you're gonna get sneak peeks. I do little share Z's there. Um, we are going to have a trivia in this. So I've written down 10 trivia questions about flowers. Here's how this is gonna work. You need to write a list, like one through 10, write your answers. At the end, I'm going to give you the answers I have. Now I hope they're the right answers since I got them off of a website. There might be more than one answer to a question. I don't know, we're calling the answers I have the right answers, <laughs> so. At the end, I'm going to give the answers and the um, and then we're going to see how many everybody has right. We're going to see, does anyone have 10? If people have, if a bunch of people have 10, we'll figure out a winner. You know, it's pretty cash around here. Um, but yeah, I wanted to do something fun within the flower theme. Um, two more quick announcements and then we'll get started on the drawing. Um, next week, I will not be doing a live sip and draw. I will post a drawing for you that you are welcome to do. It'll just be a video of me talking you through a drawing. I'm getting out of Dodge for a couple days going in, be, you know, within new four walls instead of my four walls. Um, and I don't know what the internet service is going to be like there, so I'm not going to take that on. So... Uh, next week on Thursday, Friday, and Sip and Draw Saturday, it will not be a live drawing. It will just be a video that posts at 8.30 on Saturday or whatever time during the week, if you're here during the week. Uh, other soon, we will be selling shirts and stickers, so stay tuned for that. Hopefully it's coming pretty soon. Um, it took a while to like figure out what to do there and now I think we've got it. Um, a shirt design that both men and women will like um, and then um, just kind of a fun little sticker. So there you go, that's it. There's all your announcements. New people are like, is this woman ever gonna stop talking and actually draw? Get your beverages. Tonight I have a vodka mule, Moscow mule. Our drinking word tonight will be flower. Every time I say the word flower, or the name of a flower, so if I say rose, daisy, chrysanthemum, um, you drink, okay? Here we go. 
<laughs> Yay shirts. I think you mean shots. But I hope you're wearing shirts. I mean, I mean, you can take your shirts off if you like. I can't see you either way. Maybe you like to draw topless. Okay, let's flip this around. So here is our drawing tonight. We are doing a ball jar, which is appropriate because that is my last name. Plus, doesn't everybody just love a good old fashioned blue ball jar? Um, and then some simple flowers. You could go hog wild and just fill, overflow with all sorts of flowers. I'm just doing some um, simple floral design here. I will tell you tonight, this is probably going to be the trickiest part is the lettering. It's not super easy to, oh, yay shirts, the shirts I'm selling. See, I forgot already. Uh, <laughs> duh, Stacy. Um, this is probably going to be the hardest. I, teaching lettering is really not easy. I mean, I'm just saying, okay, curve and then curve and then and curve and okay, curve again. Um, so yes, this is going to be the trickiest part. Uh, and what I did here is I did not outline this and I did use a pen for this, which I'm going to do tonight, but you could just do your pencil darker. I just, you know, on an actual jar, this is just kind of, um, what do you call that? Like embossed? I don't know what that's called, but it's part of the glass. It's not outlined. So I didn't outline this. So there you go. Is everybody ready? Let's get to it. So to start for the jar, um, I'm actually going to start by doing just kind of a curved rectangle. So I'm going to put a line about as wide as I would like my jar to be. And then I'm just going to curve this down and go the length that I want the jar to be. Oh, good, new art supplies. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side, just curving down. And you're kind of seeing me build the lines off of each other. That's because either I feel like it's not straight enough or I feel like it's not wide enough. And so I just kind of change it as I draw it. And then I'll connect this down at the bottom with a curve as well. Try and get that to match up a little bit better. And remember, you'll never get two sides um, that are perfectly symmetrical. They won't perfectly match. You just want them kind of generally to match. And the good thing about drawing is once you start coloring in, you will hide a lot of that. So if you feel like one side's a little more curved than the other, you won't see it as much once you start Let's say creating distractions on the page. Those flowers will be distractions. Now from this top portion, I'm going to curve up. I want that a little less curved than I did the first time. And then same on this side. This is way off on side to sides. So just kind of put those lines in and then just kind of look at them. Those match the best. See how it's just slightly curving in and up. And now I can erase all of this top 
line. And then let's do a line that comes out from the side and goes all the way across and out on the other side. And then this can curve up and around. and meet the other side. And now I want this to look like the opening, so I'm just gonna do a curved line within this top portion Again, just kind of making those match on each side. And then in each side of the jar, you're going to do a long, skinny, like long, skinny hot dog. <laughs> it's like those, the part that the lid screws onto the threads. And then I'm gonna put one more thread I personally, Melissa, oh no, that was not Melissa, Meliana, is that how you say your name? I think everyone is a good artist. Because art is just, it's, there's no right or wrong way to make art. Now I want to do one more thread. It's going to come out of the side here. And it's going to come all the way across the jar. And then come back around. So just one more long skinny tube shape. And just so you know, for those who are new, if you decide that drawing just really is not for you, um, I have started doing coloring pages. So a couple times a week, I will be creating those. I just started last week. So there's only two right now. But in the group, there's a section that's called topics or popular topics. Um, and there's one that now says coloring pages. And you can go on there and you can just print out pages to color. These little lines can get either erased or just do it at the end. But basically, when I draw the jar, I'm not going to put the line inside of this long skinny tube. I'm just going to hop put the line to the tube, hop it, and then on the other side. And then down here in the bottom, I'm also going to do another curved shape like we're seeing the other side. Adding some of that dimension. There we go, that works. And then here on the side, I'm just gonna do a little line that kind of follows the edge, just like we're seeing some reflection in the bottom of that jar, seeing some detail. And I promise you the jar and um, the actual lettering on the jar is the hardest part. 
if you're really struggling with the lettering, just don't put it on. Just make it a plain jar. It doesn't have to say ball on it. All right. And that's a pretty good shape for the jar. So give yourself a cheers. I'll say tulip. There you go. Give you encouragement to drink. And let's leave you there with your first trivia question. Trivia question number one. Remember, you're writing your answers down. You're not calling them out in the group. You don't need to type your answers. You're going to keep track of your answers. At the end, I will give you all the correct answers, and then you will keep track of your score. Okay? So your very first trivia question is, what vegetable is actually a flower? There's your question. What vegetable is actually a flower? Keep in mind, there might be more than one correct answer. I don't know. I was looking at a website <laughs> for trivia questions for flowers, and it gave one answer. So I am going with whatever answer it gave. So that's your first trivia question. What vegetable is actually a flower? Write your answers down. Okay, now on to this lettering. And again, this is not an easy thing to teach. It's very different than drawing. Um, I am going to do kind of a slightly waved line that comes down and back. That's the start of that letter B. This is going to come straight down, just a tick. And then it's going to follow the shape of the other line, but it's going to get wider at the base and then you connect those two lines. For the letter, um, I'm going to start at a point that curves up, cuts right across. I'm not really worried too much about the lines crossing. They're gonna cross a whole bunch. I'm going to bring it in, and then I'm going to come back out bigger and bring it back in, okay? Now, this point here, which I'm actually going to change already a bit, This is going to be wide. It's going to follow that original line. But then it's going to get more narrow as it comes into the center. And I'm just going to bring it all the way in. And then off of this, on the inside of this shape I made, I'm going to just follow that shape to make the letter thick. Oh, just keep trying. Don't get discouraged, keep going. Remember, this is your first time. You can just keep going. See what it looks like at the end. See what it looks like once you add color. Remember, if the lettering is way bad, if you're just feeling super uncomfortable with the lettering, scratch it. Don't do it. Now for the A, I'm going to do a curve in towards the B and back up. This is going to have a line that comes up comes over and then comes down. And I can actually take this right into the L. So L number one, 
L number two. Okay, now this is going to connect back into the L. I'm gonna put a line inside here and curve around for that inside of the A. And now you're just really adding thickness to the L so you can follow the line outside I'll do the same over here, just following that line outside. And then do a line that comes down, that finishes that L and brings it down. And then from this point, you're going to have a line that comes straight back, is a little wider down here, and then comes back in, and is more narrow at this end than it is here. And that works. It's not perfect by any means. You can always thin the shape out a little bit when you take it in with your pen or with your crayon. That's okay, don't apologize. And I'm gonna leave it just like that. So there is my jar with my ball lettering. I might make some little slight adjustments to the letters when I do the pen, just thinning out areas I want to thin out. But that works for me for now. So now let's get going on those flowers. But before we do, let's do trivia question number two. Remember, write your answer down. Don't type it out. We're saving that till the end. So question number two is, what flower stem was used to stuff life jackets? There is a flower stem that was used as the stuffing for life jackets. Write your answers down. Okay. First flower. Some of these flowers I know the name, some of them I don't. Hopefully you just drank twice because I said two, two times. But um, the first one is super simple. It's called a billy ball. I have a ball. And guess what? My husband's name is Bill. So this flower is just a puffy round ball. So you're just going to do a jagged edge, rough edge circle. Just like that. So if I zoom in on that, you'll see it's a very rough edge circle. And these are very cool. Um, you can have them in water, but then you can dry them and they last for years. I have some in my house and I've had them for years. <laughs> the stems I'm keeping super simple tonight and I'm just drawing them down into the jar. And I'm going to stop them about it just within this space. They don't have to all have to be the same length. 
You don't want them coming all the way down. You could have them coming short too, but I think when they come into this space, it makes it look like they're sitting in the bottom of your vase, the bottom of your vessel. So that's number one. Then I'm going to do a poppy. I'm going to do more of like a California poppy, that orange poppy. So I'm going to do two little teardrop shapes that connect at the point. And now this first petal, I'm going to have it come up from the center. I'll wave it in and out a bit and then bring it back around so it meets the outside edge of that V. And then on this side, I'll come off of this center line and I'm gonna come out to the left and I'm gonna make this one a little more boxy. The other one was more pointed. and meet with that V. Now off of this shape, I'm gonna do another flower petal and come up, curve it around, and I just kinda do the edges a little wavy. So we're seeing some of the front petals, some of the back petals. And then I'm gonna do one more petal in here and I'm gonna have this one come to a more like point up top, it's higher than the others. And then I'll put some little detail lines inside, just little light lines. And you can do this too once you're doing your pen, you don't have to put them down in pencil first. But that's our poppy. And then again, just take that line. You can go right over your letters. You're not gonna worry about that right now. And take that into the jar. So two flowers down. You guys all, all on the flowers or did people get hung up on the lettering? I almost didn't put the lettering because again, I was one, I was nervous about teaching you lettering. It's not something I've really done. Um, and I just know even for myself, it can be tricky. I struggle with it. Okay, let's give you another trivia question. Write your answers down. This is question number three. What flower changes color based on the acid in the soil? So what flower changes colors based on the acid level in the soil? Okay. My next flower, I have no idea what this is, but, oh well, <laughs> I don't know what it's called. Maybe it's made up. I'm gonna start it with the line. So up above this flower, I'm going to just draw a wavy line coming down through my jar. No, don't say the names. Okay, you gotta just write the names down. Write your answers down. Don't call them out. Now at the top of this is going to be a big teardrop shape. So a teardrop sits on the top
it's not a test, it's trivia. <laughs> you won't really be graded. <laughs> now on top of this pod, I'm gonna do four little teardrops going down into the pod. So the pointed ends goes down to the pod. I'm gonna go ahead and put a leaf in here to kind of fill some of this space. I'm just gonna do a little line and then again, another little teardrop shape. It's a little line inside of my leaf. And then I'm gonna branch this stem off into two and I'm gonna draw another one of these pods on the top. So we have two on this one stem. Again, with those four little upside down teardrops coming out of the top. Three flowers down, three to go. You're halfway there. Okay, next up, I'm gonna do a rose shape. <clears throat> So I am going to do a wide open V. That's how I'm gonna start this flower. Is that better? You're gonna connect this with a curved line down below and connect with a curved line down below. You can do that stem coming down into the jar. And then just like I did up here, these little teardrop shapes, I'm gonna put those under here as well. Two on each side. So these almost look like the little parts of the leaves on the base. And I am gonna put a leaf that just starts right off of the stem and it's going to cut right across my vase and that's okay because then I'll just erase that little line and I'll put a line a little leaf line going through it. Now when I draw this flower, it's going to end up covering some of this stem. And again, that's okay, we'll just erase it. So flowers, they're gonna look a little layered in the, in the vase. So to start with, I'm gonna do a teardrop shape. I'm gonna come up and then around and back to this point. So it builds right off of that. I actually want that way more narrow than I made it. So I'm just gonna cut it and then I'll erase this. Made it a little big. Now towards the top of it, I'm gonna draw an oval. So there is room up above, it's not quite at the top, but just up towards the top, you're putting that oval in. Off of this petal, I'm gonna draw another petal that comes around the back and touches down into this oval. I 
I'm going to draw another little petal line here in the center that comes down. And then I'm going to draw one that comes up on this side and kind of comes out to a little point and back in. And then from the end of this, you're going to just hump over, do a little curve, and then you'll do another little curve off the back here. And in this little oval you made, you're going to draw two more ovals, a little one and a big one. So that's that part of the rose where it's all still hasn't opened up. And that is our next flower. Next trivia question. Write this down. <clears throat> Who was the first president to breed roses? What was the very first president to breed roses? Write your guesses down on your paper and we'll give you the answers at the end. Okay, now I'm gonna do kind of a, a daisy style flower. I'm gonna start with the stem because I want this to fill this space here. So I'm just gonna bring a stem pretty close to that rose. Just curve it in. It's gonna go right through my letters and down into the bottom. And I'm gonna do a up above I'm gonna draw a circle. And I'm gonna go ahead and put another circle around that. And then I'm almost just doing kind of curved triangular shapes coming off. The petals aren't very big. And what I usually do is I put the top one and the bottom one, kind of match those up. This one needs to be a little bit shorter. And then I'm gonna fit two into this space. So I'm just curving around and coming in. And then here's the space for that other one. So I think it's easiest to do the top and the bottom, and then you fit two in between. Then taking one, and then the next, and then the next, and the next going around, because then I think sometimes you run out of room 
this at least helps me plan for the space a little bit better. And again, if some of them are a little bit smaller, it's okay. I mean, in flowers, they're smaller. They're not all perfectly lined up and sized. And then I'm gonna have this stem connect. If it doesn't, if it didn't touch when I drew it, um, can you lower into view? So what do you mean by lower? Seeing the whole jar? I don't know what you mean by lower. Off of this stem, I'm just gonna draw these little curly cues. I'll do one up close to the top and then one kind of off to the side. And then in these petals, I'm gonna do kind of a curved line inside each petal. And that is our fifth flower. And we have one more, which we're gonna put into this space here. So it's kind of, we have one that's low on this side too, just like we did over here. So it matches up a bit, but like I said, you could really go wild and draw a bunch coming up into this area. You could add, you know, even like branches with just leaves on them. You can kind of make it as full as you like. Maybe you have one specific flower you like and you're gonna do that. Okay, next trivia question, write your answers down, is the winner of the Kentucky Derby is draped in flowers. What kind of flowers is the winner of the Kentucky Derby draped in? And that is your question number five. And I'll give you guys just a second to get all of the flowers we've done so far on the page. And then we just have one more flower to do over in that corner. All right, so this last flower is another version of a poppy, but um, it's like that red poppy. This is more that, you know, orange kind of California poppy. So I'm gonna do a stem that curves out to the side and in. Down my jar. And now off of this stem, I'm gonna draw a half circle. So I'm just gonna do a curved line that connects with a flat line. Oh, Oriental Poppy. See, thank you. You guys know. You know so much more than me. <laughs> okay. 
Now off of this, I'm going to do a kind of curved oval or a hot dog shape. I'm just gonna add a little curved line. It doesn't matter if it's straight because this is part of the petal. The petal's folded over. Thank you, you too, have a good night. You can always come back and try other drawings. Some are easier than others. Now from this upper point, I'm going to curve out and kind of wave it back down in. And then I'm gonna draw actually another line inside of this that curves in as if this flower is kind of the petals curved over. I'm gonna do one here, kind of towards, towards the center of this curved portion that comes out, waves a little bit, and then comes back in to that oval. And then one last petal lives in the back here. And then inside, I'm gonna draw little teardrops. These will be colored black. And then I decided to add a little bud. I'm gonna turn my page just to draw this a little bit easier. So I'm gonna do a little stem off of this. And I'm just gonna draw a little teardrop shape at the end of that stem. I'll do a curved line at the bottom of it and then a line kind of down the middle. So this is like the bud of a flower that hasn't opened yet. And those are what I'm doing for my flowers. So again, you could add lots of other different shapes. I might actually move this little curly Q guy up a little higher and fill a little more of this space, maybe make it a little bit bigger. Have one small one and one big one. But you could have definitely add other little flowers in. And now let's give you another trivia question. You guys definitely better get this one right because I've said it a couple times. Um, write your answers down, please. What is the California state flower? What is the California state flower? And now you're ready to do your outline. So with the lettering, I'm not going to outline that in pen. At least not in a black pen, I should say that. And I'm also not going to put my stems in until I do my lettering. So I'm basically going to outline all of my flowers, I'm gonna outline my jar, and then I'm gonna work on my lettering. Then I'll go back with the black pen and I'll do my stems. And it'll make sense once I actually do that. But I want that lettering not to be outlined in black. You definitely can outline yours in black if you just find that's easier. You do whatever works for you. And see, I'll just do these little little light accent lines. I'm not touching very hard with my pen, just lightly putting them in. On the billy ball, I'm going to add a bunch of dots, dot, 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 dot.
I've been trying to make an effort to buy flowers and have them around the house. Um, I really like this time of year having flowers. We've done um, some wildflowers. We've done um, sunflowers. For those that are in West Sac, you know Nugget Market always tends to have some beautiful flower arrangements. Just adds a little something to the house. I think. Oh, I have allergies. But I don't tend to get them from having flowers in the house. Um, I have more trouble with um, flowers outside, more trouble with like when the trees flower, pollen, from the trees than I do from actual flowers. And most of the time I don't get flowers that have too much of a smell in the house. I haven't noticed that any of them are very, have a very intense smell. But yeah, my allergies are, well, my allergies are pretty bad. Um, but when I had my son, they changed a bit. So I don't, I don't struggle with them like I used to. But at the same time, I'm still highly allergic to everything when I go and take the tests. but it's like I deal more with congestion now from them than like the itchy stuff. And so see, I just colored these little pieces in black. Now I'm gonna come in and do my jar. Put that one little leaf in. And that jar will just go right over all of the stems of the flowers. Because really, if you had, you know, flowers in a jar, you would see all the different stems inside. If it's a glass jar. And then I'll do these two little lines coming down. And then I can put this oval, this long skinny tube in. Oh, isn't it? Things change like crazy. Let's put this line in. And then this little line. Okay, now for the lettering, what I'm gonna do is I have a um, light blue pen. Now, if you, um, if you are not doing lettering, then of course you're not gonna have to do this. If you're doing your jar clear versus coloring your jar in like a blue, you don't have to do this either. You could just outline it in black. But I basically have this pen that's this shade 
Um, you could also just do this in pencil. And I'm gonna just go along all of the outside edges of the lettering. So I'm basically outlining it in this blue. I'm gonna color it in too. But right now I just wanna make sure I have all of the lines that I need. Change this A just a little bit as I'm drawing it. I didn't love it. So like when I get to the L, I'm just coming around the outside. And then I'll draw that inside loop. Oh yes, mom, maybe I'll show my, have a tattoo show and tell. <laughs> It'll look backwards though when I show it. So for those watching at home, as you've noticed, I've had, I have a tattoo or two. Um, and one of my tattoos is actually of a ball jar. Um, my last name has no relation to the ball canning. Um, but, uh, you know, it's my husband's family's name. And when my father-in-law passed away, I got a tattoo of um, a ball canning jar for him um, just to kind of in memoriam. Um, and then instead of usually the ball canning jars, they say established and it has a date. I put um, the year he was born and the year he passed underneath it. Okay, so that's what I'm doing for now on that lettering. And then what I'm gonna do with my stems is now I'm going to jump the line of my words. So this stem, for example, it's gonna come down, it's gonna hit the L, it's gonna pick up on this side, it's gonna hit it again, it's gonna pick up, and then pick up on the other side. I don't want to put these big dark black lines through. So when I was drawing it, I did, cause I didn't really care much, but once I'm actually putting these in, I'm going to just hop the letters. And even though, you know, in if it was realistic, the stems, you would see them through the letters, but since I'm coloring these in, I just, I thought it would look real messy if those lines actually showed through. So I'm just gonna keep hopping the letters. And you'll see what that looks like in a second once I erase my pencil marks. Now, whenever I do these little curly cues, I like to do little dots along the sides of them. I, d I don't know, I just think it adds a little whimsy So just little teeny dots, but you don't have to do that if you don't want to. Okay, and then this one little one comes in there and I think that is all of it. So now I'm just going to erase all of the pencil. Oh, I see where I didn't do. Well, I can do that after. I didn't do the little lines inside of those petals, but I can add that. Not too worried. It 
They do. I, I there's just something about those little dots. I I mean even the curly cues, you know, you wouldn't really see curly cues like that off of a plant, but um it just it adds it adds whimsy. That's the word I'm going to use. Uh and then just putting those little dots is just like a cute little addition. Okay, let's give you another um trivia question. So, trivia question Write your answers down. Um, what flower has its peak bloom in autumn? What flower has its peak bloom in autumn? Write your answers down. I'll give you all the correct answers at the end. There's actually only going to be nine questions. I realized one of my questions I didn't write down the actual answer to. So we will have a 10th bonus question if we need it. We'll see how we do on the, the nine. Because they're not really all easy answers. Let's see if people get them right. Okay, let's get all that pencil off the page, see if I have any little bits to erase. I think that looks pretty good. There we go. Now, like I said, in these little petals, I'm gonna do some little curved lines. There we go. And now within this lettering, um, I am going to color it in. You could color it in um, if you didn't, you know, if you didn't have the light blue pen, you can also color it in with your pencil and just color this portion darker. But I'm gonna go ahead and color this in with the same pen that I outlined it with. but I'm gonna color the actual jar in with pencil. I just kind of wanted the logo to stick out a bit. So what's everybody sipping tonight? I made a mule. I really wanted to have a vodka tonic, but I didn't have any tonic, so I went with a mule instead. I thought about having rosé because today is National Rosé Day, but nice support and silt. I love it. Oh, the Albarino. Yeah, that's taste. That's a tasty one. That's what I was drinking last week for our um, villains. Oh, you did it with pineapple ice cubes? Mmm, I wish I could have that. I can't have pineapple, but that sounds awesome. Coffee. <laughs> hey, you know what? I used to drink coffee at night sometimes too. I gave up coffee over quarantine. My husband and I both did. I've got my vodka, Sprite, and watermelon ice cubes. Nice. Yeah, I think you could do that with um, all kinds of fruits, really. Make fruit cubes. Pineapple's a great idea. I know I saw that, Linda. I saw that she had um, vertigo tonight.
Oh, blood orange margarita. Man, you guys are fancy. That sounds good. I actually had a margarita with dinner. I still had some stuff in my fridge to make one. I think from Cinco de Mayo, goodness. So last time I asked for suggestions, um, flowers were definitely one of them. So uh, like I said, next week, it won't be a live sip and draw. Um, it will be a just watch the video sip and draw, which, you know, it won't feel too much different. I'll probably try to do something fun with it. And who knows if I have... Um, good reception. Maybe I'll do something different, but I don't know how much of my drawing stuff I'm going to take. I'll at least kind of pop on and engage with you guys via messages. Um, oh, good. You're using your Blick pencils. But what's some of the things you guys would like to see in a sip and draw? What's something else you would like to draw? We've done a car, we've done a landscape, we've done villains, we've done a couple pop culture characters um, with both Bob Ross and the Golden Girls. We did Beatles. We've done booze drinks. So what are some other Thing, what are some other topics you'd like to see or themes you'd like to see? Oh, the up house. All right. So see, now you can see kind of why I didn't put those like black lines through the letters because I think it just kind of takes away from the lettering. I have a couple little places I need to bring them just a little bit closer. your ocean that might work next week actually because in the um in the group for the kids I'm doing um water we're doing water themes all week so maybe I'll jump you guys into that too birds a pair of owls mom and baby owl we did a mom and baby owl for Mother's Day. And now I'm just going into my coloring. I'm gonna do billy balls are yellow. I'm not going to color the stems. I've kept this very simple in the sense that my stems are just a line. Um, you can definitely add color into your stems if you like. Um, I just went with a more simplicity style with this. Okay, here's a dare I say juicy trivia question for you. Remember, write your answers down. Don't shout them out. What flower, what is the name of the flower that smells like a rotting body? What is the name of the flower that smells like a rotting body? I 
I actually think that they have one of these flowers in at UC Davis. And it blooms once a year. Maybe it's even less than that. And you can go and you can visit it and smell it because, you know, that's just what you want is to go smell the rotting body flower. So what's that, what's that flower called? Oh, see, they do. I thought so. I swear I've seen it on a post online before saying they let you know when it's flowered so you can go and take a sniff. Enjoy the lovely aroma. Okay, there we go it's with my poppy. I'm gonna do these guys up here, the pods. The pods, which I don't know their names. Blue. Oh, they bloom every seven years. Yeah, I said every year, and then I realized that I didn't think that that was right, that it's kind of a, a longer duration. It doesn't happen that often. That's why it's such a big deal when it happens to go out there. And then the little middle portions, I'm going to do those a lighter blue, kind of a bright blue. that little leaf in a different green and then I'm going to do my rose actually let me do the petals first on this so these portions are going to be green and so are the little buds underneath the flower And then I'm going to color this in pink, kind of lightly, but I'm going to add some shading to this. So I'm going to kind of come up the bottoms and shade it up a bit. Do the same here. And up this side. Do a little bit on the tips of these back petals. And then I'm also going to do inside this. And then I'm going to take that um, blender pencil. Let me find it. It's hiding in here somewhere. Um, no, it wasn't. Um, my, um, father-in-law's name was Bob. 
Robert. He wasn't a photographer. They're actually um, from Davis. Well, from SAC and then moved to Davis in their 20s. He worked at UC Davis. I'm just kind of blend this a little bit. Just like that. But no, if anyone's from Davis and knows any balls, those are definitely relatives. <laughs> There were a lot of them out there at one point. Now they're all gone, but there were lots of kids. coloring this one on the lighter side too and then I'm just going to do those center lines darker just kind of add a little bit there in the middle We have one more trivia question. I'll give it to you guys as soon as I'm done coloring in the flowers. Remember, we only have nine. I thought we had 10, but we actually just have nine. And then we'll see how you guys did. See who got the most right. I actually did color it in with the pen. Um, yeah, I did it with the pen, but you could also do it with the pencil. Like if you didn't have, um, I'll, I'll tell you the reason I didn't outline it in pencil is because if I outlined it in pencil, when I erased all my other pencil lines, it would have erased. It would have smudged it and erase. So that's why I used the pen on that one part. So that way I could still erase. But yeah, I, um, uh, you grew up in Davis and there was a Ball family next door. I only remember Steve Ball. Well, I had, there's a Steve, but he's not a Ball. There's a Steve married to one of the Ball girls. Where in Davis did you grow up? What neighborhood? Just do these a little darker down here on this end just to add a little bit of depth. And now this poppy I'm doing red and I'm actually going to color a couple areas darker and then a couple areas lighter. So I'm gonna do these areas where the leaves are kind of folded over. I'm gonna do those darker. And then this little area is kind of folded over. So I'm gonna do that darker. And then I'm gonna do this other portion lighter a 
little bit darker right there in that center where those middle pieces are and then this a little lighter and then I'm going to do the bud of the flower darker and then I just need to do that little bit green No, they would have been South Davis, out in like the farming area. So different balls, which didn't. But there's cousins and stuff out there too, so they probably are relatives. Okay, so that's it for my flowers and for my um, lettering. I'm still going to color the jar in. I am going to color the jar in using a pencil. So I just have a pencil that is pretty much the same color as that pen. But when I color with it, it will look lighter. So that way the logo still stands out. Um, let's give you the last trivia question. So um, what flower did Monet most frequently paint? What flower did Monet most frequently paint? So those are all nine. You should have nine answers written down on your page. And then I will give you the answers I have, which is what we're gonna go off of. And we'll see how everybody did. So you'll give yourself a point for each one you got right. And this is the honor system. So we're gonna hope that everybody is honest about their answers. So question number one was, what vegetable is actually a flower? And your answer is broccoli. So if you wrote down broccoli, give yourself a point. The next is, what flower stem was used inside of life jackets? What stem did they use to stuff life jackets with? And the answer to that is sunflowers. They use sunflower stems to stuff life jackets. Next question was, what flower changes color based on the acid in the soil? And the answer to that is the hydrangea. The hydrangea will change colors based on the acidic level of the soil. So give yourself a point if you got that one right. Next up was, who was the first president to breed roses? And the very first president to breed roses was George Washington. George Washington is the answer.
Next question was at the Kentucky Kentucky Derby. The winner of the Kentucky Derby is draped in flowers. What is the winner draped in? And the answer to that is roses. The winner of the Kentucky Derby is draped in roses. So if you got that right, give yourselves another point. Next up was, what is the California state flower? I even said it multiple times, and then my mom wrote it in the comments, saying how much she loved the flower. So the California poppy is the state flower. I also happen to have tattoos of that as well, because it's my son's favorite flower. Next question is, what flower peaks its bloom? What ha flower has its peak bloom in autumn? And the answer to that is the chrysanthemum. That's why we see so many of those around Halloween and Thanksgiving. The chrysanthemum, because that's when they peak for their bloom. Two more questions. We have, what flower smells like a rotting body? And that flower is perfectly named the corpse flower. The corpse flower because it smells like a rotting corpse. And last but not least, what flower did Monet frequently paint? He frequently painted water lilies. That was the most popular flower he painted, or the one he painted the most. So, did anyone get nine out of nine? If you did, just answer yes, nine out of nine. I'll give you guys some time because there's always a delay. You did, Rosie? I know you were kind of answering along, so let's see if anybody else did did anyone else get nine two out of nine <laughs> hey you know what i'm going to tell you the truth here if i had guessed these answers i would have known four of them i would have known four so i would have gotten four out of nine i didn't know them all either Anyone else, or is Rosie our only perfect score? Rosie, are you a, f a flower enthusiast? All right, then it looks like Rosie is our winner tonight. So congratulations, Rosie. I will be contacting you after we end the video. And I have decided I am going to add one more flower in here because I don't like how there's all this empty space over here. So I'm just gonna draw a stem that comes down I'll run right along the edge of that. And then on this, I'm just going to do circles down 
the sides. It just needs something over here. It needs some height. I'm just doing this straight into pen. And that just gives me a little bit of height on that side. You kill all your plants. So do I. Okay, I also do. I have one plant. I don't know if my mom is still here, but she would tell you. I have one plant in my house that I bought. It was tiny. It was one of those teeny tiny little plants. Um, and I put it on the corner of my, I have like a, a center island in the kitchen where the sink is. And I put it on the corner and it got big and I just, so I threw it into, I had a, like a candy jar, like one of those classic glass candy jars um, with the lid and I threw it in that. I planted it in that and that thing is massive. It's massive. It hangs almost down to the ground. I am petrified to move it because I think if I move it, I'll kill it. Um, over quarantine, we went and finally bought a second plant and I gave the plant a name because I felt like maybe if I named the plant, I wouldn't kill it. <laughs> um, so I have a new plant. I have plant number two. His name is Hank and hopefully Hank survives. He's doing okay so far but I'm hoping he does as well as my plant that just hangs off of the edge of my bar. Cause that one looks, that one's rocking and rolling. Oh, 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 good Lord. Okay. So there we go. So congrats, Rosie Chow. You are our winner tonight. Awesome job on the flower knowledge. Thank you so much for joining me for the ball jar. Let me turn off my light and I'll flip the camera around as I'm over here trying to get all my stuff situated. This light is blazing. Okay. All right, so thank you again. Um, it was nice getting dressed up for you guys. <laughs> I'll say I did it for you guys. Um, my sister always names her plants Sherman. <laughs> yeah, just name them, right? You can't kill something that you name, though. Don't tell that to all the goldfish we've tried to have. Um, anywho, it was fun again tonight. Um, I will... Next week, again, the sip and draw will not be live. It will just be a video. I don't know how exactly that's gonna work. It might be a link to a YouTube video. I don't know that I can just load a video onto Facebook like that that's like, you know, an hour long. Um, might go a little bit faster, but you'll be able to pause it. Um, I might be brave and do something just in pen and you guys can give that a try. Um, so it likely will be water themed. I think I'm going to stick with that since we're doing water themes in the group. I think I'll stick with that. Tomorrow I will announce what all we're doing for our water theme for the kids. And stay tuned. Um, we will, like I said, be posting information soon about um, shirts and stickers. And I love you guys. Thank you so much. As always, these events are always free, but I appreciate any tips that you give me. Um, they always go back into my supplies and whatnot. And have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Thank you so much. Bye, guys.